Welcome and thank you for participating in our virtual informational event to let more people know about RISE. I'm Deirdre Garten, Chair of the RISE Capital Campaign and a co-owner of Quibi's Grove. For those of you who signed up for dinner from Quibi's, I hope you've enjoyed it or are in the midst of enjoying it. RISE Wisconsin is one of the largest providers of well baby, mental health services, and respite care for children and their families in Dane County. RISE plans to remodel its Fordham Avenue building so its entire staff and programming can be located in one facility, thus generating significant benefits for its 3,000 clients and the community by creating a more efficient and focused operation. I used to volunteer at RISE and also worked closely with its Children Come First program when I was in the district attorney's office. I was always impressed with its impact on young children and their parents. What most impresses me about RISE today is its systemic approach and collaboration to improve services to entire families, not just individuals within the family. That approach results in significant savings for taxpayers. Hopefully from this presentation, you will learn a little more about RISE and all the things that it does for our kids, our families, and our community. Thank you. Um, I'm a single mom to my daughter, and she's eight years old in second grade. I'm a single parent. I moved here um, with no family and no, nowhere in sight. I just needed some help with like early childhood developmental to help Logan be as successful as he possibly could. We had a really tough birth. And she was actually in a medically induced coma for um, a while. And we struggled um, with our families being from two kids. We went to four kids, so we struggled with housing, childcare, and just parenting um, for becoming such a small family to an enormous family. Well, we've been involved with the respite center since 2012. Um, me and my family moved from Chicago when we were here at the time we was homeless. She's had a lot of trauma in her life and her background. As a mother, I feel like I was the cause of a lot of Carmela's pain. When my daughter was three months old, we had um, tried nine different formulas in three months. The state accused us of not feeding her, and they took both of my children into foster care. Self-harm has been something I've done in the past. I can say I was in a pretty dark place before um, I met Libby. What Beth um, did for me was just, it, I, I can't even put it into words. Um, she really stepped up more than I ever like expected. She was there for me, like hands down, no matter what time of day or night I called, and she was there. It felt like a family, you know, felt like they was so concerned about me and my, and my children. She gave me like so much confidence for like just who I am as a person and as a parent, and that I can do the things that I want to do in life, and I needed that. I really needed that, and it was probably the best thing for me. She really helped me actually bring positivity into my situation in my life. I never felt uh, that I was like a, a pity or anything like that. She was trying to remind me that I'm strong still um, and I can get through this, like not to give up. She didn't make it feel like a correctional program or I'm here to teach you how to be a parent. It was, I'm here to support you in being a parent. Having someone that knows what's going on and where to go was extremely helpful. We have come a long way from being homeless. There's a lot of people that can't do this by themselves. This program is one of the, the, for the little kids especially, I think, one of the best programs that exists. Beth and my mom and all of my social workers and all of the programs like believed in me and that's how I got the whole weekend of school and did all my homework and stuff like that. 
I was never told that I couldn't do it. I could do it, I can find it. Um, no matter how tough it got, they were always there for support. They really love you and they really care. This program and all of these programs are changing people's lives and they want parents to be able to enjoy their kids and kids to have a happy home. The only can say is thank you very much for, for the program. Just, we love you, we love you guys. The last four and a half years have been amazing and I don't know where I would be without them. Thank you. Asking for help, it actually does benefit you. It may be the most humbling thing you have to do, but when you actually need it, do it. For all the families we work with, they have just so much love and strength and resilience to this world, and they don't always get the appreciation they deserve. And so I think when people are like, no, dude, like you're doing this. Like you are raising these beautiful children and you're working really hard and you're overcoming all of these different barriers and all the adversity that the world out there is putting on you and being able to have the families I work with, you know, feel that from me, feel that I respect them, know that I care about them, know that I care about their family. It makes me feel really lucky. We want to make sure that when families come and, and, and come to our building, that they feel warm, that they feel welcomed, and that it's a safe space for them. We want to actually wrap our arms around them and have them feel like part of the family. So when they're taking the risk to reach out and, and get help, that we're there for them. Hello everybody, I'm Steve Goldberg, and I have the honor of helping the folks at RISE raise money to remodel and expand their Fordham Avenue building so that they can locate their entire staff and all programming right here in one space. And here to help us understand a little bit more about what that remodeled, expanded space is gonna look like and how it will help RISE's participants is the executive director of RISE, Scott Strong. Scott, we're really glad that you're going to serve as our tour guide for this sneak preview. And I'm going to put my mask on. You can take yours off and tell everybody why this project is so important. Thank you, Steve. Yes, since our merger in 2017, the part that was missing was having all of our staff and our programs in one location. And this will allow us to be all together, to collaborate on our programming, and make it um, more welcoming and, and comfortable and less confusing for our participants to, to find us. So Great. let me take you on a tour of what this uh, new project will look like. Where do you want to start? Let's start over here. And where are we? What's, so what's over you, here? So as you will notice in the, the, uh, the video that you'll see, is this is the new doorway. What we're doing is we're expanding this wall out and making it a more welcoming space for, for participants to come in, a less confusing walkway. Right now we have two doors and it's really confusing to know exactly where they should come in. With this, we're allowing one uh, main entry point. So as we walk through the door here, we will now have a uh, reception area greeting the participants that come through. Um, and then as, we're, as they come in and, and we decide where they need to be going, we will have two uh, waiting areas in the lobby. We'll have over to this right over here. This will be opened up. It'll be a play area where children will have age appropriate activities, to entertain themselves and, and keep active while they're waiting for their appointment. And over here, we will have another um, lobby waiting area um, for people to just kind of wait for their, uh, to be seen by their staff and, and receive programming. So Scott, why is it important to have an open space for participants? What does that mean for them? Yes, yeah, it's, it's very important. Um, seeking help is not easy. And we want to make sure that when families come and, and, and come to our building, that they feel warm, that they feel welcomed, and that it's a safe space for them. We want to actually wrap our arms around them and have them feel like part of the family. So when they're taking the risk to reach out and, and get help, that we're there for them. So what else? What's next? What's next? So if you follow me right through here, we will have a door, a, a doorway, and then we will be going into a, a space that currently is blocked off in our blocked off with hallways and offices. It does not allow for any collaborative workspace. It's not open. 
What we plan to do is eliminate all these walls and all these spaces in here and open this up to a collaborative workspace. We are, right now we currently have offices on the external of the building, right, which I will show you in a little bit. We're gonna move those offices from the outside into the internal side of the building along this wall down this way. Why is that? We really wanna make sure that the staff that are kind of working in those collaborative spaces have more sunlight um, coming into their space. Um, it makes it more, more bright and really kind of, I, I personally think it adds some more innovation and creativity. So it's gonna make a, a, a very welcoming and um, kind of collaborative space for our staff. So tell work. us why the collaborative space is so important because a lot of people don't work in these kinds of organizations every day and they don't know how the collaboration helps the staff and more importantly, the participants, the clients. Sure, great question. Um, all the work that we do is really based on wraparound philosophy and collaboration is one of the key components to wraparound. Um, we provide at RISE a continuum of care from early childhood, um, birth to, to five years old, all the way up to young adult um, mental health case management work. Um, to be able to collaborate across programs, we're able to integrate uh, our mental health programming and capacity into our early childhood programming and vice versa we're able to have smooth handoffs and referrals that go from our early childhood programming into our child adolescent and young adult programming and that's a little tougher in the current configuration it is we yeah. currently have um, two main locations um, and staff don't get a chance to see each other uh, very often you know all the collaboration happens either via email or phone right now um, we will have a lot of spaces throughout this building that you'll see that will um, lend themselves to really um, informal um, and formal collaboration spaces. So the, they'll have a chance to, to kind of ask questions, think out loud, get to know each other, and understand the programming that's being offered uh, within RISE. Good. So we're consolidating two locations into one, and in the reconfigured, remodeled version of this building, there's going to be a lot more open workspace for teamwork and collaboration between staff, and that's going to help the participants. That's correct, and we're intentionally making those spaces in, um, in a way that's going to be more collaborative. So let's go this way and I'll show you what, what our new space will look like. Cool. I'm anxious to see what the collaborative open space looks like. So as I'm walking down this way, what you'll see is this, right now there's a doorway which is, was set up as a suite. We're going we're gonna, to um, take the walls down and make sure that we have it more open. So it's not going to be separated and siloed the way it is now. It makes it really difficult currently to really collaborate across programs. So we're removing these wallways. Hall, doorways, I'm sorry, and along this wall is, in, is where we will build the um, offices that we're going to have. So again, like I said earlier, they're going to be all internal and so we can maximize the light for the open office areas. So coming down this hallway, if you look to the right, that there will be offices. And again, off to my left, this will be the open spaces that you will notice in the renderings that you will see. So these walls come down? These walls are coming down. We're opening it up and making this our collaborative space. And it's really a nice location here on Fordham Avenue. Our respite center is just on the other side of the building. Um, many of our families utilize the respite center. And so it might be, it's gonna be another opportunity for them to have appointments. And if they have young children that may not be able to be part of their appointments, the respite center might be a nice option for them. So is this the only respite center in Dane County? It's the only respite center of its kind um, that serves children ages zero to 14, um, that really provides a service for those uh, Children who are at um, the risk of abuse and neglect, or parents that need some a break for employment or education. So again, it's one of its one of the its only kind in, in the Dane County area, and, and very few in the state of Wisconsin. And didn't it win a national award recently? It did. It won. It was one of seven uh, respite centers nationally that won the Arch Award for Excellence, uh, which is a really high, um, prestigious award, and we're really proud of the respite center and the work that they do. So follow me down this way. So what's over here? Well, I just, if you saw me kind of walk through, that's a doorway. This is, will be our new kind of cafeteria area for staff. Um, it's gonna be another one of those informal collaborative spaces. So it's gonna be set up in such a way where staff, if they wanna get a break from their, um, their office or their workspace, they can come in here and, and do some collaborative work with another staff person. Mm -hmm. um, off behind you to the, to the left over there, there's a booth area um, that you'll notice in the renderings um, as you walk through that. Uh, will be another space for staff to just kind of relax, could be doing some work, um, and just collaborating. So this is going to be set up for that. Um, we also will have this space as a, an opportunity to do some community programs or some events that uh, rise on a smaller scale would like to host. Um, it's going to be set up really nicely. 
And if you walk through here, um, right now we have these beautiful windows that overlook the, the playground for the respite center. And we're gonna have some doors that will open up and we'll have to the right of this the oak, um, tree and the sandbox, we'll have a patio for staff, again, to um, work outside, to have informal contact, have their lunch um, and take a break area. So I'm really excited about this. It's one of the places that we know um, we have the most interaction um, with as employees where we, again, just have a chance to get to know each other. One of the drawbacks right now of having multiple spaces is we don't have established relationship, and this is gonna be one of the places that staff are really looking forward to establish those relationships. Yeah, sounds good, so the space, both interior and exterior, could host community events? Yes, Especially absolutely. during good weather? Yep, okay. absolutely, we're looking forward to doing that. Good. So, there's just imagine that right now with the new cafeteria, there will not be a door here, but I'm just gonna walk you through right now to, to show you what the, the current space look, is looking like. So right now, the current space, as I mentioned, it's fairly siloed uh, with lots of offices in the middle and hallways. And so here's another um, example of the hallway um, that we have that doesn't lend itself to collaborative workspaces. So Scott, this is pretty impressive first floor. What's, what's upstairs? So right now, um, if you, when I walk through here, it, it looks pretty, much the same. It's a mirror image of the first floor and we're gonna do a very similar thing upstairs. So um, there's probably no need to walk through there, but you just imagine what the first floor looks like. The second floor will look very, uh, very similar to that minus the cafeteria area. Hey, thanks Scott, that was a great tour. Appreciate you being the tour guide for this. Anything else you'd like to share with our viewers today? Yes, thanks Steve. As you can see through that brief walkthrough, um, we're really excited about the opportunity that this building project presents. It will allow RISE to complete the merger that we began in 2017 by bringing together all of our staff and our programs into one space. It will also make a huge difference for the over 3,300 children, families, and young adults that we serve annually. Additionally, RISE will be able to kind of carry out the, our vision of having a continuum of care within one location, which will make service delivery much more seamless for families. I'm really looking forward to the completion of this project and really hope that you can join us for our grand reopening at the end of 2021. Please let us know if you'd like to learn more about the building project and our capital campaign. Thank you for everything you already do for our community and for taking an interest in RISE. And together, we will rise to the occasion. RISE Wisconsin! Wisconsin.